All right, so this is a little OLED display. Um, there is a rotary encoder, a real-time clock, a relay, and a 80 mega 2560 R3 processor. It's one of these little clone things. Um, that's like 10 times bigger than the regular Arduino, what you can get. I have ordered um, like the nano version of that for the project just to have it all soldered on, but you get a ton more digital inputs and outputs and all kinds of crap. So on here, I've created this menu system for setting various things on the aquarium. What do you want to set? I want it to be able to phase the uh, LEDs. I've got a little sample of the LEDs here. Little addressable LEDs, which are quite smart. Um, so I wanted to be able to have them phase through various like colours, um, kind of look pretty. I wanted the RGB lights to come on but just white at a certain time in the day and I've got some grow lights on there as well which I wanted. They're 12 volts so they've got a little relay. Um, so yeah, I'll, st I'll start here. So HSL stands for Hue, Saturation and Light. You've got the little ring on the left there. You can move it up and down with the rotary encoder. So once you've got to the setting that you want to change, so let's just say we want to change the RGB lights to being on, we press and hold it for a second and then it goes from being a ring to being a dot. So you can change it to cycle and that's a couple of sine waves, one of them on hue, one of them on saturation. And that just goes through various phases. Times out. So if you don't touch anything for 10 seconds, it times out and comes out of the menu. So auto speaks for itself. Times are above. Off and on. So when it's in the on mode, what we do to the HSL on the menu here, this is when this makes a difference. So the little dash denotes which parameter we're going to change. If you press it one time, you can then change that parameter. So you need to click it two times in order for the number to change. That's because the step size below it is set to 0 0.05. So we can like gradually go through the spectrum of what's available back to, uh, back to red. So if we change the saturation, if we take that up to the maximum of 1, that's going to give us the most vivid colour. So you can see how that's changing. Incidentally, the, uh, the light setting on there If we get across to the light, the closer to one you get, the more it's just going to be white. And then the hue and saturation make no difference whatsoever. So you're going to want that at about 0 0.5. Of course, you've got the step size. So if we make that one you can see how it changes what's going on here so we get to the hue so it changes it in much larger increments so here we've got the time settings for our grow lights so if we change this to uh, after the current time so as soon as that ticks over at 8 the little relay will come on see that in the background which is pretty cool
the RGB lights, it's the exact same module. Um, I wrote a node for that, I put a node together so that I can just use that over and over again. So that's pretty cool too. So this is the program within XOD which I've created for that menu system. I wanted to show you how this stuff works. Basically I was looking for a, a visual programming system which means that I can simply and quickly put together a program for the Arduino which does what I want it to do. I found the XOD to be really really good. The online tutorials are very good. The uh, community is very good. No one puts you down for your lack of knowledge or being a newbie to it or anything like that or you know makes you feel like you're stupid. Most people have been there themselves. I don't really want to have to learn how to program in C. I think it's going to be a good thing to do at some point but at the moment I'm focused on getting the Arduino to do this project. Okay, So you can build up really really quickly with uh, XOD. So you'll find these nodes which you connect up to your um, devices. So this is what you would use for your OLED display. So everything connects to here. You could put a link between the things like that if you want to. Uh, but these are this device bus, if you like, makes it simpler, less lines going around. This, these are all the different lines of text. This is your uh, real-time clock module. This unpacks the time and date, so you get all those elements come up, which forms a big part of this project. This series of symbols here, most of the time doesn't do anything. This is how we set the time and date with the uh, real-time clock. We just leave it in there. You will find that there's a bigger overhead of code with using the XOD software, so that you're going to either want to use a, a, a bigger processor like the uh, 2560. I believe I haven't done it yet, but I believe the ESP32 can be used with this programming environment as well. I've got one of those. I'm going to try that at some point. What you're going to want to do quite quickly is combine commonly used symbols into into new patches. So you'd create a new patch by going to there, create a new patch, call it new, and then you can say, for example, I want to put all of that. You copy that, and then you can paste it into there. And then you would in, use input and output nodes. If I click on one that I've already done, like here, all of these circles at the top and the circle at the bottom are represented on the top and at the bottom here. So if we grab a new one and bring it over, you can use that same bit of code as many times as you need to within your project, which is quite a good way of going. These all come up within your project. If you want to add those little bits of code into a new project, you're going to have to upload them to the to the library online, and then you can add them. And that's what people have done down here. So like this Bradzilla with the NeoPixel, you know, he's got a load of uh, symbols there. He's got a load of nodes what he's put together there. Some of these guys are actual developers for the XOD, I think, but a lot of the stuff is already within the within the program. And so the LEDs I'm using, the uh, WS2812s, they're all within here. You see, which is quite cool. So you just drag it across. So if I was using another series, I could just change it here. But I've got to a point where I'm I'm happy with the project. Um, there's always going to be new things that you want to do. I've realised that with the with the time on and off piece of logic which I've I've put together, it only really works if the on time is after sorry, if the off time is after the on time. So it's reasonable that you might want your grow lights to come on at six PM and go off at six AM in the morning the following day. This logic won't allow for that. This only allows for if you if you have them come on at any time from you know, midnight zero 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 through to you know eleven fifty nine the following day. So oh sorry, eleven fifty nine that night, that's how that works. So 
you know, there are limitations to it. But surprisingly enough, I couldn't find anyone else's library which accounts for that. I don't know why that is. Maybe someone's going to watch this video and say, oh, yeah, that's built into it. Why didn't you just use this one? But you know what? I looked, I searched, I couldn't find it. I did it my own way. But I'm pretty pleased with how the project's worked out. If you've got any questions about it, specifically about any of these things, then let me know and I'll go into more detail on it. But I just wanted to give a quick overview of how I got to where I got to with my aquarium light timing project. <laughs>